one of the things that I hear a lot or read a lot about and people who I kind of go, hmm, maybe Munchausen's maybe getting unnecessary procedures as having surgeries that are unnecessary. But one thing I hear from genuine zebras is getting surgeries that are unnecessary. And the reasons for this are so complicated. So I'm just going to do a story time. I'm going to tell you about a surgery that I had that was unnecessary. And I think there will be a follow-up video where I'll go into what might have been done differently. So May-ish of 1999 I was rowing um, crew as Americans call it um, as part of my college's second date I think it was at the time and I don't remember a specific injury and the action of rowing doesn't give you a lot of opportunities for twisting or tripping or anything like that to cause a specific injury. But I I picked up an injury somehow, um, struggled to cycle home from the boathouse um, not sure whether it was that day or the next, hobbled to the college nurse and asked for, I guess, advice what to do. And they actually sent me to the sports medicine clinic at Adamworks Hospital, which I had no idea existed until that point. Um, and it was a drop-in clinic that ran three afternoons a week. It was happening that afternoon. I was given a taxi voucher to get there and get back again and it was just really great so off I went there and they didn't really tell me what the injury was and um, they gave me some crutches I don't remember how long I was using them for and then they maybe did some kind of treatment that day um I remember heat lamps and ultrasounds and various things so I got given a few more physio sessions through this sports medicine clinic um and it was only physios there was no doctors uh and you know I did some more physio I was presumably doing some exercises as well as getting these local treatments and I guess it healed up because I did go back to rowing in the autumn term um and I had to stop rowing after that autumn and spring term for completely unrelated reasons um and then by November, December time, 2000, yeah, year 2000, year 2000, um, my knee was acting up again, um, and yeah, it wasn't a sports injury this time, I went to the GP, I guess I was expecting to be referred for physio, at this time I had no diagnosis of EDS, I did have an idea that I was flexible but I had no idea at all that there was any kind of pathology as potentially associated with that um so my doctor referred me to a knee specialist and as it happened at the time because I was still under 21 I was actually on my parents private health insurance um I don't know how much you know about how things work in the UK but it's possible to buy or have through work private health insurance and yeah, I was able to burn my parents until I was 21 and so I did actually wait to get the appointment on the NHS and it was actually 11 months away from the time 
from that point in time. I was just like, I can't wait for this long. You know, I can barely walk. Fortunately, I could still cycle quite well. So I, I was cycling to do strange things that I really ought to have be just been walking. I'd actually cycle from where I lived round to the front of college to get my mail rather than walking the much shorter distance through college. Um, and yeah, so I got a private referral and saw somebody after Christmas by this point. Uh, so this is 2001. And it's probably January 2001, and I saw this guy, and he said, well, it's A or it's B, and I think A, he said, was a torn meniscus, and B was something possibly called a plica, something like that. I should actually just skip back a bit and say... I don't know why my GP referred me straight to a surgeon rather than going for another physio evaluation or anything like that. I guess he thought that a surgeon might would send me to physio if that was the correct thing, but on the NHS with an 11-month wait, whereas physio would have a much shorter wait. I don't know. I really don't know what physio provision was like locally at that time because I had never engaged directly in physiotherapy services at that point in time and how didn't then from the two or three years after that so I honestly couldn't say what they were like it late 2000 early 2001 anyway so I go so the surgeon says it's A or B and he says the tomoniscus should stir up on an MRI but this plica thing it wouldn't show up on an MRI so both of them need surgery and therefore you should just have surgery. I can tell which it is in surgery and I can fix either one of them in surgery. So when I went in for the surgery, I felt like I was consenting for surgery A or surgery B. But in reality, what you you consent for is a knee, lapar a knee arthroscopy, not a laparoscopy. That's in the belly. A knee arthroscopy and with license to do whatever they do so I really was completely unprepared for the outcome um and the surgery that I actually had is called um a lateral release I really don't know very much about it this is you know quite a long time ago um and it was so painful and my leg was literally bruised from my hip bone to my ankle bone. It was just horrendous. It was swollen. It was bruised. It was just awful. Um, but actually, even though I ended up staying in hospital when I was expecting it to be day surgery and just finding the whole recovery process was a lot harder than I'd been prepared for, I, I did my physio and within... I wouldn't say six weeks, but probably 12 weeks, I was fully recovered. And actually, that knee, it does give me trouble, but it there was a 10 years or so where it did not give me any trouble at all. Um, it had given me enough trouble that my GP referred me for an MRI on it a couple of years ago, and it, it showed a few little things, but nothing that any any treatment could help um so i suppose the important thing to say now in this video is that the problem that a lateral release is a treatment for is the kneecap not tracking properly typically due to a muscle imbalance between the quads and the hamstrings i think not not 100 percent sure as you can imagine, this is a, a muscle imbalance. It's nothing to do with um, you know, the length or the size of something. It's nothing fixed in your body. It's no abnormality. It It's a muscle imbalance. And, you know, some people seem to be more prone to it than others. Interestingly, it does seem to be a moderately common rowing injury. Um, 
I didn't find out about that till later. Um, but I had Latch Release, which is the last step in treatment for a problem, not the first step, and it was literally the first step other than the few sessions of physiotherapy that had the beginning. So that's all for now, folks, and I'll do another video about why I think that this, well, I've said what why this surgery was an incorrect surgery to do, and I'll try and talk a little bit more about how I think it could have gone differently, both from the doctor's perspective, but I don't want to all blame the doctors. I'm all about taking responsibility for your own healthcare, so I'll also be trying to go into how I think I could have done things differently. Okay, good night.